airport in Bangkok is a gateway through which 300,000 people enter Thailand each year. Heads of state, students, diplomats, businessmen, tourists. Today, Bangkok is prepared for the arrival of a very special visitor, the Vice President of the United States, Hubert H. Humphrey. His Excellency, the Foreign Minister, Sanat Koman, greets the representative of the American people. The American ambassador to Thailand, Graham Martin, introduces the Vice President to Thai and American officials. The composition of the Vice President's party testifies to the importance of his mission, for it includes W. Averill Harriman, Ambassador at Large, Leonard H. Marks, United States Information Agency Director, and Jack Valenti, Special Assistant to President Johnson. Representatives of Bangkok newspapers, television and radio stations crowd around the Vice President and Foreign Minister. This is the beginning of extensive news coverage of the two-day visit. Manangasila, the splendid mansion which was the gift of King Rama VI to a member of his court and which serves the Thai government as a residence for distinguished guests, the Vice President is to be housed during his visit. As a luncheon guest of the Foreign Minister, the Vice President meets other men who have dedicated themselves to peace and freedom. His Royal Highness Prince Juan, a Deputy Prime Minister who was President of the United Nations General Assembly, and His Excellency Pote Sarasin, Minister of National Development, who was the first Secretary General of the Southeast Asia Treaty Organization. After an audience with His Majesty the King, the party visits the headquarters of the United Nations Economic Commission for Asia and the Far East where they are welcomed by the Executive Secretary, Hunyun of Burma. Here, in company with another visitor, Ambassador James Roosevelt, the American representative to the United Nations Economic and Social Council, they discuss development programs of concern to Asia and the United States. Vice President Humphrey is about to see one of the reasons why thousands of tourists from all parts of the world visit Thailand, a trip on the majestic Chao Phya River. a great commercial artery, the Chao Phya has an important historical significance to the Thais. It was on one of the tributaries of this river that the old kingdom of Sukho Thai was founded, and centuries later the capital was moved to Ayutthaya on the Chao Phya. About 200 years ago, the capital was moved to Tonbury, across the river from Bangkok, and finally to its present location. Bangkok today is a rapidly growing cosmopolitan city with a population of approximately two million. As the capital of the country in the heart of Southeast Asia, Bangkok serves as the headquarters of a number of international organizations and as a place from which travelers can continue a tour of Asia in many directions.
As the vice president's party proceeds along the river, a travel poster comes to life, the Temple of the Dawn. From the central tower, which is 74 meters high, the visitor has a magnificent view of the city and the harbor. Construction of the great tower dates back to the reigns of King Rama II and King Rama III. Although there is complete religious freedom in Thailand, most of the Thais are Buddhist. It is not surprising, therefore, that there are approximately 28,000 temples in Thailand, many of them favorite subjects for picture-taking tourists who come to Thailand each month of the year. These lightweight hats provide the Thai farmer with protection against the sun and rain, but visitors find that they make decorative souvenirs. Silk, bronze, and ceramics are other Thai products that appeal to visitors. Thai temple rubbings, which are transferred directly onto soft rice paper from the stone friezes of the temples, attract the attention of the vice president's party. Although wild elephants are still to be found in Thailand, the average visitor to Bangkok sees only the variety carved in wood. A trip to the northern part of the country would permit the visitor to see elephants working in the teak forest. The Temple of the Dawn, called Wat Arun by the Thais, is covered with thousands of pieces of glazed and colored tile, giving the temple a magic beauty. These stone figures are an almost accidental decoration, for they were carried as ballast in ships which came from China and returned laden with Thai rice and tea. The vice president is obviously enjoying himself and asks many questions about what a room. More than 5,000 miles of canals and rivers form an inland waterway network in the vicinity of Bangkok. At one time, they were the only transportation routes connecting the countryside with urban areas. And even today, thousands of tons of farm produce move into city markets each day by boat. Now the vice president sees a school on the banks of the river and requests that the boat stop so that he can visit the children who are playing in the schoolyard. The school's 314 students and 12 teachers are delighted to welcome someone who so clearly is keenly interested in young people. The vice president brings them greetings and good wishes from the children of America and expresses his praise for Thailand as a great free country. Ever since King Rama VI made education compulsory for children between the ages of 7 and 14, the Thai education system has expanded, and today Thailand has achieved one of the highest literacy rates in Asia. More schools, colleges, and universities are being opened to accommodate the growing population and provide the necessary trained manpower needed for further development. This government school lies in the grounds of a temple, as many do in Thailand. 
The Vice President expresses his thanks for the warm hospitality he has enjoyed to one of the Buddhist priests. Now the Vice President and his party make a dramatic switch in transport to fly to a village in northeast Thailand, not far from the Mekong River. Near the village of Ban Po Tak, they are welcomed by the Foreign Minister, the Deputy Provincial Governor, and American officials. Here, as in other parts of rural Thailand, the Thai government, with American assistance, is working to bring economic and social development by building roads, bridges, dams, schools, and by expanding health, education, and welfare facilities. This intensified program is being carried out in many of the kingdom's provinces, and plans have been made to expand development in other provinces which do not yet enjoy the same standard of living as the central part of Thailand. One third of Thailand's population lives in the Northeast. These people know the extremes in weather, the hot season when all is dusty and dry, and the monsoon when the land is flooded. Dams are being built to provide water the year around and to bring electricity to the area. In addition, they will tie in with one of the most ambitious projects in Asia, the development of the Mekong River, which eventually will benefit four countries, Thailand, Laos, Vietnam, and Cambodia. The Vice President and his party are told about the various development programs in the Northeast. Programs which not only bring economic and social benefits, but which strengthen Thailand against communist subversion. There are mobile development teams from the National Security Council to bring urgent relief to remote areas, long-range accelerated development programs on a provincial level, community development workers in the villages, and also mobile information teams of the Thai government and the United States Information Service to explain the government's efforts to improve living standards and counter communist propaganda and subversion. Once again, the Vice President is with children and enjoying the experience. Here he presents fruit to children who have come to welcome the American visitor. It has been a busy day for the Vice President, and there are more activities ahead, so the party expresses its thanks and prepares to leave the Northeast. Swirling dust the helicopter carrying the visitors begins the first leg of the journey back to Bangkok, where they will be dinner guests at Government House. Hosts for the evening are the Prime Minister, Field Marshal Tanom Kitikachon, and his wife. In the receiving line with their wives are the two deputy prime ministers, His Royal Highness Prince Wan General Trapat Charusatian, Chao Pia Wisan. and the foreign minister.
Vice President and the wife of the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister and Mrs. Graham Martin, wife of the American Ambassador. Prince Juan and consort. Education Minister Mamlong Pin Malakun. Toasts are proposed by the Prime Minister to the President of the United States, by Ambassador Martin to His Majesty the King, and by the Vice President to his host. Prime Minister and the Vice President speak with feeling about the long and friendly association Thailand and the United States have enjoyed. There are reminders that both countries have much in common. Devotion to peace, belief in collective security, and dedication to the principle that all countries, large and small, should have the opportunity to develop as they wish without outside coercion. An example of delicate Thai silver work will provide the Vice President with pleasant memories of his visit. Classical Thai dancing, which is enjoying a renaissance in Thailand, provides a pleasant evening of entertainment for the visitors. No one who loves liberty and enjoys living could ever feel a stranger in Thailand, the Vice President declares at the airport. He also speaks of the various development projects in Southeast Asia to which the United States is committed and which will bring peace and progress to the area. On behalf of his party, the Vice President expresses deep appreciation for the hospitality extended by the Thai government. Much has been accomplished in a short visit. The Thais have gotten to know the Vice President on his first trip to Thailand, and the Vice President has seen for himself a country and a people with whom Americans have very close bonds. But the best summary of this brief visit came from the Vice President himself, who said, And I leave you with my congratulations on your efforts already underway and with my hopes for even greater achievement in building that peaceful world of abundance which we all so earnestly seek. Let it be clear that the, the objective of the United States of America 
is entirely that of a world at peace, a world building a better day. And it is indeed for all of Southeast Asia as a part of that world, a very special, special opportunity for a better day for the peoples that live here.